Okay, welcome back to Beyond Your Knowledge. So today we're going to be studying here the the osmotic laxatives. Okay, and we're going to see some diseases related with this, or not just some diseases. So we're going to do a correlation with some diseases. But before we continue, let me just read Isaiah forty-three two. When you pass through the waters, it will be with you, and through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, and the flames shall not consume you. Okay? So, osmotic laxatives. So, first, why do we use osmotic laxatives? So, if the patient has a constipation, so, but what is constipation? okay so constipation basically is when decrease your bowel movement okay so and then you count and everything and yeah all the patients tell you that cannot go to the bathroom well so decrease bowel movement and the patient has constipation and what are the most common population that can has constipation yep one of those is those that are in they have a low energy so for example elders okay and another example of people that can get um constipation so those are use chronic opioid therapy or users okay and also and it causes lifestyle whoa it's very important because we don't eat enough fiber which is good lack of fiber can cause constipation okay now if you have a patient who has a chronic constipation or has a constipation sometimes we can give some osmotic laxatives and some of those osmotic laxatives I'm going to write here what do you think that are those so yeah one of these called magnesium citrate another one is called polyethylene glycol okay another one is stool softeners Are enemas okay so basically some, some of those go um, liquid or this one is yeah so liquid 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 yeah and this one well it is an enema so it's not liquid so go to your rectum now let's just talk a little bit more about the osmotic laxative I'm to open a new slide here that we can just focus better and how do they work so the osmotic laxative they work because they are non-absorbable so basically you cannot absorb okay not absorbable and if you cannot absorb the substance so what happens so you're going to track the water okay into your intestinal lumen so let's just do something like this so basically imagine that this is your J system okay so it's like that it's your J system okay so then you can observe so basically all the things are going to come here it's going to attract and it's going to attract everything here and then this lumen is going to distend so now it's huge okay so you see so distend it and then increase the movement okay so increase the movement and when we talk about increased movement it's called peristalsis okay now they are usually rapid okay 
but the magnesium hydroxide and another magnesium containing compounds such as magnesium citrus it's a kind of another osmotic laxative and it's often also used um, but with those two that I mentioned so the magnesium hydroxide and the uh, or the magnesium containing compounds you know what so people is wondering how that works it's still being basically if it's a, it has a it's, it has it is good or not so we're still questioning about this okay so this is this is now an advice if we advise the patient to do exercise why exercise when you're doing exercise you are losing sodium okay calcium go inside and calcium increase <coughs> your muscle contraction and if you increase your muscle contraction so because you smooth muscle is in your gastrointestinal so increase the movements increase peristalsis and then you go better to the bathroom now you need to drink water why water water this tint so this tint you lumen and if you distend it basically the same or fiber what we can find on fiber so vegetables fruits etc all those things okay also I mean dry fruits flaxseed all those seeds those are good now if we oriented our patients so i think that we can avoid that they go to this level being constip or have constipation and we can avoid to be given any of those osmotic laxatives and even more things so lifestyle with ahead of time is good for every person okay now let's just talk about here a disease so this disease is called lactase deficiency this condition basically so cause something similar as when you are taking osmotic laxatives okay sorry osmotic laxatives oops ah. i don't have room there actually laxative okay so you can see there yeah that, that, that doesn't look good just do it better why not better yep it's not like that now the lactose deficiency how we can characterize it so the patient has osmotic diarrhea oh but well, why the patient so we will we'll see so patient has this osmotic diarrhea now when or how we can get lactic deficiency could be inherited or it could be acquired okay inherited well you will have all your life acquired so if you get any gastroenteritis or anything something that affects um, your your brush border so in your J system so yes you can get get like the deficiency but then eventually you can recover now basically as i mentioned so the pathophysiology yeah so you you have a deficit or you lose your brush border enzyme but what kind of enzyme well the same thing lactase what does lactase do lactase helps you to convert i mean to to break it down so because lactase it is a disaccharide and we cannot absorb disaccharide so you need to break it down to monosaccharide 
okay but it's two so what are the two monosaccharide that is going to be the results when the patient has lactase good question so it is one of those that we use a lot glucose and the other one is galactose so that means that when you um, consume lactase so I mean when you consume lactose you need an enzyme called lactase to break it down this lactose to be glucose and galactose okay and those two glucose and galactose they are absorbable so you can absorb them <coughs> excuse me yep now if you don't digest your lactose well you get the osmotic substance and this accumulation does not necessarily lead to an increase your secretion of what of water because you have osmols there so it's going to attract waters and also going to attract electrolytes so this patient they can get easily um dairy and and dehydrated so where do you think that this water and electrolyte going to go yeah you're right so to the lumen of the intestine okay yeah so lactase deficiency let's just say lactose intolerance presents how is going to be the presentation yeah one of those is going to be abdominal pain makes sense because all those organs are in the abdomen so abdominal pain the patient can have this tension hmm. but those are more general abdominal pain you can get it for any indigestion or for anything this tension you can get it also for an indigestion or for other things but this patient has watery diarrhea This abdominal pain and the distension result in the metabolism. Uh, result, yeah, from the basically from the metabolism of lactose by normal gut flora fermentation. So basically, you cannot digest lactose. So and if you cannot, so who is going to do it? It's going to be the bacteria. And what does the bacteria going to do? They're going to ferment okay and then you're going to have gas and then if you have gas you get distended and that causes pain because the, all the innervation around is just compressing and also if you distend so you can also um, compress some of those arteries that supply oxygen and then we you lack of oxygen or ischemia because there's not right enough oxygen so then you have pain the abdominal pain and distension as you mentioned is not that the patient shouldn't be the happy now those those things how we can prevent this well if it's acquired so we have fully come back but in the meantime while you still have it so you we need to stop using like toes dairy product that has the lactose okay basically this is that so we need to eliminate milk and any animal that come um, um, I mean any derivative from milk yep and so I think that basically is that I remember that we can do all things to Christ thank you for watching the videos and God bless you